Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where we test ChatGPT by pushing it to its limits. Today we're going to be racing ChatGPT to making a application that creates some posts, has some user accounts, and gives each post some comments. Now you'll see down here we have some pretty detailed steps. We tell it to create the, the post, we tell it it should use ESBuild and Bootstrap, we tell it in these users uh, to scaffold the posts that the post should belong to the user, that the post should have many comments, and that we can't create a scaffold for the post because we only need the ability to create comments on the posts themselves. We'll go ahead and we'll run this. We'll start two timers, one for me, one for ChatGPT. We'll make the top one ChatGPTs, and then we can go ahead and get started. We'll go ahead and move this over to make this a bit fair, and then we'll try and uh, resize everything. I'm gonna go ahead and start both of the timers and then I'll hit enter down here and enter down here. We'll then do a, uh, we could start with a bundle add device and and a rails g device colon install and and a rails g device user and and a rails g scaffold post with a title and a body of type text and a user colon references and and a rails g comment with a body of type text a user colon references and a uh, post colon references we're going to hit enter on this and then we'll go up because i forgot to do a cd into video we'll go ahead and we'll run all of this that should generate just about everything except we forgot the rails g controller comments controller which doesn't have any actions up here, it looks like it is currently setting up device. It did tell us we couldn't find the generator for the comments. So we have to come up here and see what we did. Rails G, we forgot the model. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll hit the back arrow. We'll get rid of all of this and we'll paste this in and then come up here and say Rails G model comment with the body and the user. We can then do a code dot a Rails. Oh, let's just do a bin slash dev to start the server. We can close all of this. Uh, and then we can come over to our routes.rb. In our routes.rb, it looks like it's still running, but I am gonna have to hit continue soon. We'll say a resources for the comments. We can then come into the models. We'll start there in the user model. We need to make sure this has many posts. Uh, we need to also say continue. It's already on the finally step, so we've definitely lost this one. We'll say continue with a dependent destroy. It also has many comments. Let's go ahead and let's copy this comments line, come into the post, already belongs to a user, it needs to belong to a post. Let's come into the comments, that already has both in the controllers, in the comments controller before action to authenticate user. And remember, we are gonna be checking the uh, code that it generates, so we'll give that a shot in a second here just to make sure that it's uh, actually accurate this time. We want to make sure this is a post comments new with a current user and we're passing in the current user, making sure we're logged in. If we get here, that's fine. Next, we want to, although this is a post comments new, I don't think we need the, uh, well, I guess we do need the app post, that's fine. It's done, I'm gonna stop its timer. We've definitely lost this one, uh, but we're gonna keep going. Let's see how long it takes me to do this. We'll come in here, we'll do the authenticate user. We'll do a at comment equals uh, comment dot new because we're grabbing the at post. I think we're fine with not passing in the post ID. That'll be cool. Let's come into the, uh, oh, actually let's come into the post controller real quick. We have to come down here, get rid of this user ID. We also have to come up here and make sure the at post dot user equals the current user. That's good. Let's come down to the views, the posts in here. We need to come into the post form, get rid of the user ID. We then need to come into the post partial. We need to get rid of the user ID here, but instead of that, we'll just do the post.user.email.split at the at symbol, grab the zeroth element, call dot capitalize on it. So we just get the first part of the email. Then down here, we need to do a uh, render for the comments slash form, pass in the post, which is just a post and the comment, which is gonna be the at comment, something like that. We can then come down here and do something like a uh, post.comments.each do comment, something like that. Grab this, copy it. We need to do a end right here. We can backspace this. We'll do a h6 for the uh, comment.user.email.split. 
Let's just grab this whole line, paste it in right here. Oops, paste it in inside of here. Switch this to be the comment. And then down here, we can do a P tag for the comment body that'll hopefully fix the formatting. Doesn't look like it did, that's fine though. Now we have to come in here to the post or the comments folder, new file underscore form.html.erb. In here, we have to do a form with for a model, which will be our uh, post and our comment. I'm waiting for GitHub Copilot here. It gives us a uh, good form right here. Post comments needs the end at the bottom, has some comment errors. That seems like it's fine. We have the label for the body. That's fine. This all looks good. Let's come over to localhost port 3000. We forgot to set a root. So let's go ahead and do that. We also have to run our migrations. Let's go ahead and run the pending migrations. And let's come in here and say the root of the application is the post controller index action. I don't think chat GPT would have thought of that, uh, but that's okay. We're much smarter than chat GPT. Let's click sign up, do a Dean at example.com for the email. We're gonna copy that, paste it in as the password as well. Click sign up, device will error out, but we're gonna just go with that because chat GPT also doesn't know the device is broken right now. We'll create a test post with a case for the body. Click create post. Our post was created. We have the user, the body, and the title. Let's try to create a comment, question mark. We'll hit create comment. We have an undefined local variable for the comment params. We forgot to implement that. We'll do a private. We'll do a def for the comment params. We'll take those in. We'll then come back to the post one page. We'll do a test for the uh, comments. We create a comment. We have them creating. Let's go ahead and let's stop this timer. So we clearly lost the race, but did we lose the war? Uh, I feel like this is a pretty good starting point. Now let's come over here and let's see what chat GPT told us to do. So I'm gonna actually stop the server, CD out of here, and do the exact instructions that it tells us to here. So we'll move the terminal over real quick for a little bit, and we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll start this. Now the original timer here was 2.41. Um, we of course have to run through these. I'm gonna just go with these commands and we'll just make this a, uh, a, a no timer section. We'll say this it took 2.41 and just assume that you instantly copied this in as it was happening. So we'll go ahead and run a Rails new for my blog, pass in a dash webpack equals ES build. I don't actually know if that command still works, uh, but I guess we'll see, because I don't usually use uh, these commands because I use the dash J stuff. But uh, yeah, let's CD into the my blog, we called it. Then we start the Rails server. We'll go ahead and run that. We'll come over to localhost port 3000. That seems to be working uh, to the surprise of pretty much no one. Let's now come into the code dot for this. So open up a VS code instance, we'll come over here. Uh, and again, it's gonna have all the stuff open. Uh, let's see, we have to, let's move this down here now, I guess. And then let's move this one up here just to make sure we can see this. So we're in here. We now need to add the gem for device inside of our gem file. We'll move it at the bottom here, save it. It wants us to run a bundle install command. That's good. It now wants us to run the generate device install. It wants us to run the host scaffold, I guess, right? This will create an initializer, uh, including follow these instructions to set up device, including creating a user. Oh, okay. So it wants us to read through the terminal output to generate the users. Okay. So let's see where it says that. Uh, depending, you may need some additional configuration. Step three, step four. I'm not seeing any directions here that tell us to create a device user. I'll put some instructions, follow these instructions to set up device, including user model and adding the necessary routes. Uh, right here is for the mailer. This is for the mailer continued. This is for the routes. This is for the flash messages. This is for the device views. Okay, so we're gonna have to do a Rails G device uh, user. We're just gonna assume that that one's good and that it had it, I don't know. Uh, let's now generate the post scaffold. We'll paste those in. Go ahead and run that. Looks like it has the user references. That seems fine. It wants us to do a DB migrate. Let's run that. Next, we'll add the ability to create comments. We have to generate the comments model. That seems fair to me. Post references, user references, the comments have content. That's fine. Generate or do the DB migrate again. And it wants us to generate the comments controller. That's good. 
In the comments controller, add actions for creating and displaying comments. For example, you might have a create action that creates a new comment and associates it with a specific post and user and a show action that displays a list of comments for a specific post. Okay, sure, but we don't have that. You've just told us that we have that. Uh, so let's come into the comments controller uh, and let's just do a def create and let's just let GitHub Copilot decide what it needs to do. Uh, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. And then we'll do the private for the comment params. There we go. Uh, body and a post ID. Okay, so we'll just save that. We'll pretend the GitHub Copilot's working with chat GPT. Finally, we'll add bootstrap, okay. Now it wants us to add a bootstrap gem. So let's come down to the gem file, add a bootstrap gem, and let's run a bundle install command. Uh, there was a parsing error, gem file syntax was on a, what? Uh, oops, we we messed up a bit. Okay, so let's move this one up here, I guess. There we go, let's run the bundle install again. That'll add the bootstrap gem. Uh, looks like 4.7 doesn't exist. It was just guessing, so let's get rid of that. And let's run a bundle install again. Okay, there we go. Now in the app assets style sheets application.css, app assets uh, style sheets application.css, add a require for bootstrap. Uh, it doesn't say where, so we'll just put it at the end. In the app assets javascripts application.js, we don't have that, so we have to come into the JavaScript uh, application right here. We'll just uh, uh, import Bootstrap, I guess, and we'll just pretend that works. Uh, you can now use Bootstrap styles in JavaScript. Yep, blah, blah, blah. You can also customize the appearance of your blog by creating custom style sheets. Uh, and that's it. Uh, can I have a form for the comments on the post show page, please? Did I miss that? Like, where where is my comments form? It creates the model for it, but it doesn't look like uh, it has anything for actually creating it. Here's how you can create a form for creating comments on a post. Let's come into the app views comments form.html. Uh, app views comments form.html. So we'll say underscore form.html.erb. In here, we need to copy this, paste it in. Okay, sure. Uh, in the post controller, add an instance variable for that. Okay, let's come into the post controller. In the show action, we need to have both the at post, which we don't need, but we do need the uh, comment, that's fine. In the post show.html, we need to render it. Seems reasonable. Underscore post, it doesn't know about the partials. Uh, let's get rid of the, well, I guess it, it didn't tell us to get rid of the user ID. Let's do the comments form. In the comments controller, add a create action with the comments param. There we go. So let's come into the comment, oops, the comment controller right there. And let's just get rid of everything that's in here and put in specifically what it told us to use. It seems fine. Now in the routes, I probably should have done this to begin with. Uh, we need to add the nested resources. Also seems reasonable to me. Finally, make the form is submitting the correct route by adding the post ID parameter to the forms URL. So in the uh, post form or in the comment form, I guess we have to make sure that this is using the URL for the post comments path. Okay, let's go ahead and let's run a uh, Rails S to start the server, I guess. And then let's come over to localhost port 3000. I guess we have to go to slash posts. Uh, we can't find bootstrap with type CSS. Okay, so I guess uh, application.css. No, application. Yeah, application.css. Let's just come in here. Let's just get rid of the bootstrap and let's see how broken everything else is real quick. Uh, so we click new post with a title or a test and a case and a user. So I guess uh, the user has to exist. Of course, this is not going to work. Um, how do we, uh, how do we do this? We just say, how do I fix this error? Let's come uh, here, user must exist. <laughs> Let's just try this. Let's see what it comes back with. Maybe it'll suggest removing this from the post form, hopefully. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it anyways, and we'll just pretend that that worked. Uh, we'll keep that going. I'll come over here and I'll refresh. I'm also gonna come into the post controller and I'll get rid of the ID for the user at the bottom here. 
Uh, and then in the post create, we have to say current user. Uh, and then we have to add, well, I, I guess we don't have to add the before action. I'm just gonna go ahead to the user slash sign in path. I'll say sign up, dean at example.com with a password of the email itself. It's probably faster. Uh, so that did create it. That's pretty cool. Uh, what's chat GPT saying? We need to make sure you're trying to create a new post, but the user associated with the post is not valid. This is this can occur if you are trying to create a post without a valid user being logged in or if the user reference. OK, make sure you're logged in. Uh, check the configuration for the user. Uh, make sure the user field is present in the form for creating a new post. Well, I mean, that's really not necessary. Post params. Uh, yeah, so this is just trying to debug it. So it really doesn't know. Uh, but we can come over to slash posts. We should be fine now. Test case, click create. That does create the user. We'll try to create a test comment. Comment created successfully. Uh, I'm noticing that it doesn't have the comments being shown here. So let's ask it, how do I show a posts comments on the post show page? We'll go ahead and we'll try that and we'll see if this works. Uh, if it does or if it doesn't, I think at this point we could pretty much call it. Some annoying errors with its code. Uh, you know, the 241 is cool, uh, but it's definitely a bit deceptive when it comes to something like this. <laughs> uh, this is an okay way to approach it. Let's come into the post controller show page, do the comments. So it looks like um, in the app show page, do the comments each. Okay, so this will give us what we want and uh, it should look good too. Let me copy this, paste it down here. Uh, make sure you have a name attribute in the user model. It's trying to do this user stuff again. We'll do an email instead. Uh, this should display a list of comments. Let's come over here and refresh. Uh, undefined method comments for post. It didn't give us the associations, I think. So let's come over to the models for the post.rb a post has many comments let's go ahead and do that and refresh there we go case okay so now we're creating the comments so that was you know i probably should add a timer going for that but considering the fact that these two were in under six minutes and the video is now 17 minutes long i think we can see uh that there was definitely some time lost by using chat gpt instead of doing what we know how to do that said, it was still interesting. Uh, I still think it's a pretty cool tool. Uh, you just have to be careful with how you use it um, because you can get yourself into some trouble. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this was interesting um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.